Hey folks, in this video I'd like to start a new series of videos all about uh, deeper calculation and what I'd like to do for this video is actually offer you guys a training position to work on as your calculation training for the day. What I'm going to ask you to do is to pause the video, set up this position on a physical chessboard if you really want to get the most out of this exercise, and calculate deeply for 15 to 25 minutes. There's a full solution here, and the way I'm going to be scoring this one is by awarding points based on how many correct variations you see. So what I'd like you to do is pause the video, set up this position with white to play, black's last move was bishop to b4, just for your awareness, and calculate, try to find a force and continuation that leads to white's advantage. I'd encourage you to spend 15 up to 25 minutes here. You can spend more time if you want to. Try to visualize everything from the start. Don't move any of the pieces. And I would estimate the difficulty of this exercise as pretty tough. I think there will be something in here for players anywhere from 1600 all the way up to 2400. And after you're done thinking, write your solution down so you commit to your answer. If you want to take it an even uh, further step, comment uh, on the video below exactly the lines you calculated and how you evaluate that situation. Uh, and then afterwards, when you go through the solution, I'll be awarding points based on how many of the right variations you saw, and you can kind of judge and, and measure how you did. Uh, afterwards, it'll be fun to see uh, how players of different ratings uh, scored. So after you've completed the exercise, let everyone else know, let's say your rating and how many points you scored. And be honest, you don't have to lie. No one is going to believe you anyway if you say 50 out of 50 or something. But <laughs> there's a maximum score of 50 points and uh, try to do the exercise uh, for real. If you don't feel like calculating right now, then I'd encourage you to move on to the next video. Don't, don't spoil the answer for yourself and come back to it at a future time when you more feel like calculating and working on the game. This position actually comes from one of my games and while I was able to find the solution, I didn't actually see the full solution so I wouldn't have earned the full 50 points. So after we go over the solution, I'll let you guys know how many points I would have scored if I was taking this exercise uh, during the game. So last chance to pause the video, think about this position with white to play, try to find the forcing solution and afterwards we'll go through all of the critical lines. All right, so if you're watching this, that means either you've already paused, you figured out your answer, you commented on the video below, or at least you wrote down your variations in your notes so you can judge clearly which lines you saw and which you didn't, or you just skipped ahead to the video and you're just watching because you just want to see the answer and that's totally fine as well. So in this position with black's last move, bishop to b4, their main idea here is to take this knight on c3 and establish the knight on e4. So there's only one way for white to really fight for a big advantage here, and that is through the move g5. So five points if you thought this was the strongest move, and um, as we go through this, I'd encourage you guys to uh, keep track of your points. You can earn a total of 50 points and there will be uh, certain variations where I'll hand out um, partial credit if you didn't find the best move but perhaps found the second best move then maybe you don't get the full points but you'll get a couple of points for seeing that alternative variation. So five points for seeing g5. In here black doesn't have a ton of options. The main move is bishop takes c3. If black plays knight to e4, then we can simply capture this one. And after the captures on e4, bishop takes e4, takes, takes. White wins a pawn, is a pawn up, and stands cl clearly better. There's really no reason to calculate further than this. And give yourself another three points if you saw this variation and that white is winning a pawn. So the main move here for black is to play bishop takes c3. This is kind of the uh, most uh, critical defense. Now if white simply recaptures the bishop, white is okay, but after knight e4, black is also kind of okay, and the position is actually pretty close to equal. So instead, white really has to pick up the gauntlet and make this move g takes f6 work. And if you saw this move as well, you get another 5 points for seeing that this move is possible. 
Now there are several different uh, variations here. So number one, if black recaptures on f6, either with the knight or uh, with the g-pawn, this is not really critical. For instance, after knight takes f6, white is simply recapturing on c3 here, and we're a piece up. And if g takes f6, white wins a number of different ways. Bishop takes c3 is good. Queen g4 check is absolutely winning. Queen h5 is crushing. Uh, any of these moves work for white. And give yourself one point for both of these variations, as long as you understood that knight takes f6 and g takes f6 uh, are winning for white through any number of means. So one point each for these lines. Uh, instead, black has a few more critical variations. Uh, we'll call the main line bishop takes b2. This is where black uh, tries to uh, accept white's peace sacrifice, and white is going to have to prove full compensation for this. Uh, but another move that is also important to see as a possibility is this idea of knight takes e5. Now, earlier this move was not possible. Going back a step here, if black played knight takes e5, then white would just play f takes e5. And as soon as this knight moves, f7 is hanging and black is going to be busted. No points for seeing this. I would say this is pretty obvious from the starting position. Um, but after bishop takes c3, g takes f6, now knight takes e5 is definitely a uh, variation we have to consider, as well as rook takes e5. So if you calculate a knight takes e5, f takes e5, and bishop takes b2, and in this position you calculate it until... Uh, the end of the line, you will be getting a full seven points. Uh, but you have to see one of a couple wins here. Uh, the easiest win, I would say, is bishop takes h7 check. Then after king takes h7, queen h5 check, king to g8, white goes queen to g5, and basically is checkmating black here. After g6, queen h6, the game is over, and bishop takes d4 check is possible, but doesn't really help black uh, in the end. So plus seven points if you saw this line. Uh, up until queen to g5, or if in this position you saw the line queen h5 and you calculated this out, uh, meaning black plays bishop takes d4 check, king h1, h6, and here you had to see that white wins with queen to g4, g6, and bishop takes g6. If you saw this blow from afar, then you get the full seven points from this section and white is winning. So in this position, if you calculated either of the wins with bishop takes h7 check or queen h5, h6, and then queen g4 with idea g6, bishop takes g6, uh, then you can award yourself the seven points for this section. Uh, during the game, uh, I actually calculated uh, bishop takes h7 from afar, and this was actually the game continuation. King takes h7, queen h5, king g8, queen g5, and the game lasted a couple more moves, but ultimately the result was decided here. Uh, one move I actually did not consider during the game was this move rook takes e5. Uh, so nice job if you at least considered this one. And if you found that after f takes c5, bishop takes b2, white wins with bishop takes h7 check, king takes h7, queen h5, king g8, and now not queen g5, but f takes g7, you get another 5 points for seeing this move. If you thought queen g5 here was winning as well, the problem with this one is that black actually has a defense with queen f8. So black can go bishop takes d4 check, king h1, g6, and white is actually not winning here. Queen h6 is met with queen f8, and black is fine. Uh, so I don't know if during the game I would have uh, found f takes g7. Uh, I didn't really consider rook takes e5 from the initial position, but hopefully once I got here, I would have figured it out. Uh, so other than these two moves, knight takes e5, rook takes e5, we finally get to the main line, which is bishop takes b2. Uh, and now white only has one way of getting a winning advantage here, uh, and that is through the move, again, bishop takes h7 check. A really important uh, follow-up sacrifice to this idea, because of course we already sacrificed the bishop on b2. Uh, so five points if you saw this move, and this was part of your variations. And I'll give you guys a couple of bonus points if you saw some details here. Number one, if you saw that king h8, you have either knight takes f7 or queen h5, you get one point for this. And after king takes h7, if you saw the mate with queen h5 check, king g8, 
queen takes f7, king f8, and queen takes g7, you get a bonus point for this as well. Uh, after bishop takes h7, however, the calculation is certainly not over. Black's best move is to go king to f8. And here, actually, white doesn't have uh, that many ways to get an edge. Uh, in fact, the only way is starting with the move f takes g7. Uh, another two points if you calculated this move. Uh, now, after king takes g7, white is basically uh, winning here with queen to g4 check. Uh, now, if king takes h7, queen h5, and white is giving a checkmate to the king here in the corner, either like this, or for example, if the king went to g7, queen f7, king h6, and queen g6. Uh, two points if you saw this mating line. Um, and after king to f8, here it's important that white finds knight takes d7 check, king e7, and then knight e5 back, surprisingly, is the, by far the strongest move. So bonus three points if you saw this far as well. Uh, in fact, this is where I ended my in-game calculation. I didn't really think it'd be necessary to calculate uh, further than this. If you did, and you actually calculated further, for instance, you saw bishop takes d4 check, king h1, bishop takes uh, a1, uh, white actually does win by force here after queen g5 and queen g8, taking on f7, king d6, queen takes b7, bishop takes e5, fe, rook takes e5, and now only move in this position, rook to c1 wins for white. Uh, if you calculated this far, you get all the points in the exercise, and uh, I just want to say your engine is working well, uh, and that's it. Uh, so full points <laughs> if you saw until rook c1 there. Um, okay, going back to this point after f takes g7, we just looked at the lines with king takes g7. Uh, actually, during the game, I calculated even uh, deeper here because I thought, well, king e7, I'm still down a piece. It's not that clear uh, how white is actually winning here. Uh, and the clear best move here is rook a e1. So if you actually did see this move, then you get another five points uh, here. Uh, and the idea is that bishop takes d4 check, king h1, now we're threatening a deadly discovered attack against the king. The king cannot run away, king d6, there's knight takes f7, and if black takes on e5 with anything, for instance, uh, knight takes e5, f takes e5, uh, the f file opens up, and this is basically a killer threat. So an additional two points if you saw f takes e5, uh, threatening queen takes f7 and evaluated this as winning. Uh, instead, if you did not see rook a e1, but you saw rook a d1, uh, you can have uh, three points as a partial credit, as this move also gives white a pretty big advantage. Um, and also, if you calculate it to this position and uh, you found the line knight c6 check, uh, bishop takes c6, uh, rook a e1, king d6, rook takes c8, queen takes c8, g8 equals queen, where black is forced to give up the queen and reaching this position. Well, this one is actually bad for white, so you don't get any points if this was your idea, but if you saw this variation and realized that black is better and you evaluated this as better for black, then you can get a bonus two points for seeing this one. Um, but only if you evaluated it as black is winning, because actually black has a ton of material, three pieces for the queen here, the king is actually surprisingly safe, uh, bishop takes d4 is coming, and black is actually in full control. Uh, okay, so that is basically the full uh, solution. So again, there's a total of 50 points up for grabs. And uh, once you've gone through your variations, try to be honest about what you saw, what you didn't see, check your notes for the moves that you actually wrote down. I'd be interested in hearing what your rating is, your level, and how many points you scored on this exercise. It's definitely a really tough one, and this is the first one that I've done of these, so don't be shy if you didn't get a lot of points. You know, you were probably not expecting how much analysis and calculation uh, might be needed, but now you kind of get a sense of what it's like. So let me actually go back and take you guys through through what I actually saw during the game. Um, when I reached this position, and this is a game I had uh, about a year and a couple months ago, 
um, with black having played bishop b4. I actually spotted this idea to play g5, bishop takes c3, and g takes f6 pretty quickly, because I realized that, well, if I just allow bishop c3, knight e4, I'm going to have nothing, so I looked for other options. Um, and after bishop takes b2, actually it didn't take me too long to see bishop takes h7 uh, as well, because uh, I noticed this idea that after takes, we have queen h5 check, queen takes f7, and queen takes g7. Um, so I kept calculating from here because after king f8, I felt like it actually wasn't that clear. I'm a piece down and my rook is hanging and the d4 pawn is hanging. So I felt like if I didn't 100% have something here, I might just be walking into a bad position. Uh, so I thought, okay, fg7 looks like the only move. I started with king takes g7 here. Uh, I found queen g4 check. I saw that this one is leading to mate after queen h5 and queen takes f7. And after king to f8, I basically saw that this knight is hanging, knight takes d7, king e7, and the worst case scenario, I would have knight e5 here. Uh, I looked at a little bit for other moves here, like rook e1 check, for example, but then I thought the king is kind of getting away. I wasn't 100% sure about this one, but I felt like, okay, I have knight e5 uh, at the minimum, and uh, I wasn't too worried about, for instance, losing the rook on a1. Um, after, let's say, bishop takes d4, king h1, and bishop takes a1. One of the lines I, I spotted that, actually I didn't include, but I think not too relevant, was that I can play queen g5 check here. We Earlier we looked at king f8, but if king e6, there was bishop f5, king d6, and knight takes f7, so the king is not really getting out here. Once I saw this one, I thought that, okay, white is probably doing well here, and I felt like it's too deep to calculate any further, I went back to this position and I said, well, what about king e7? Uh, and during the game, this is actually the position I think I spent the most time calculating um, because I really wasn't sure what to do here. Uh, ultimately, I decided on rook a d1, but actually it's kind of a, a funny story. At first I thought, well, knight c6 to me looked like we're winning the queen, but then I realized in time that actually black is going to have too many pieces here. Uh, so I was thinking about all the alternatives. I couldn't really find anything better than rook ad1. For whatever reason, the move rook ae one just wasn't speaking to me, and I probably thought bishop takes d4, and what am I doing? So I would have played um, rook ad1 originally, but then while my opponent was uh, thinking about the move after I played g5 uh, on the board, I was actually, I went to the bathroom, I was thinking about it in my head, just trying to kind of visualize the lines again, and actually in the bathroom I found rook a1, I realized, oh wait, this is actually a stronger move, seeing this idea that whenever black takes on e5, we have f takes e5, and this f7 pawn uh, is a huge target. So technically I didn't find rook a1, uh, according to the exercise, you know, as it was presented, my choice would have been uh, rook a d1. Uh, then going back, like I mentioned um, in this position. So I focused on bishop takes b2, but I realized knight takes e5 is an option as well. I totally missed rook takes e5, so I would have missed five points for this one. Uh, after knight takes e5, uh, f takes e5, bishop takes b2, I basically calculated this one out uh, from afar, so I would have gotten uh, the full points here. Um, and I think that just about does it. So I would have lost... Um, Let's see, going to this moment, I chose rook ad1, so I would have gone in three points here instead of the full seven uh, for seeing rook ae1, which is five points, and then another two points for seeing all the way up to here. Uh, so I lost four points for that, and I would have lost the full five points for rook takes e5, because I didn't really calculate this one, and I certainly didn't see that in this position. Uh, f takes g7 was going to be the only win for white. So I think if I'm judging myself, I guess I'm getting 41 points out of 50 or so. So not bad, but as you can see, really tough exercise. So that wraps it up. Once again, let me know how you did, what's your rating, and how many of these lines uh, you saw. If you felt like you struggled with this one, don't worry. It's a pretty deep exercise. I think it was pretty tough to see uh, the lines all the way through, especially until the end. We're talking about uh, 8, 9, 10 move calculation. Um, but hopefully it gives you an idea of what you can strive for and the kind of depth you can achieve during the game when you're sitting there focused and trying to work all the lines out. Because of course during the game we're always feeling like, well, if we can work out these lines until the end, we might be able to just calculate and find a win right then and there. 
Uh, all right, guys, thanks so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed this format, do let me know in the comments as well. And uh, please let us know that you're enjoying the content by leaving a thumbs up or a like on the video. It really does help us out a lot. All right, guys, have a good one, and I'll catch you next time. Take care.